While Formula 3 racing went from strength to strength, a new class, Formula 3000, burst onto the scene in 1985 to replace Formula 2. In some ways, the new formula was less spectacular than its predecessor. But all over the world, single-seater racing cars continued to thrill the crowds. Sandvoort 1984 and Formula 3 action. Alan Berg's the villain of the piece here. You just can't put four cars where there's only room for three. Paul Jackson's the victim in this dramatic and spectacular accident. The incident again in slow motion. Berg changes his mind about which side he wants to overtake and slices over to the left, putting his rivals in big, big trouble. Berg carries on, but Jackson is out. The Italian Formula 3 championship at Monza and it's raining hard. Everyone's missed him. Well, nearly everyone. Oh, it's OK, sir, you can get out now. Back at Sandvoort and they've decided to restart the race. It's tight despite the depleted grid, but everyone's away safely. Russell Spence, chasing the Formula 3 title in 1984, decides the best way to deal with a threat from Dave Scott is to spin him off. And we shall see more of Mr Spence later in the film. At Zandvoort, again in 1985, Russell needs only to finish in the top three to clinch the title. But a small navigational error puts pay to that. And while Spence in the Ralt takes out a rival, Cathy Muller in the Blue Renard escapes with a spot of grass track racing. In slow motion, the impact looks no less painful or costly. Donington Park and those Formula 3s are at it again. Freestyle aerobatics from Andrew Gilbert Scott. This is how our cameraman Dave Wynn Stanley saw the incident before throwing away his crutches and running for safety. He was sacked. For dereliction of duty, of course. Harold Hausman, the unwitting cause of this spectacular affair when a swinging arm broke on his Marlboro Ralt, leads the effort to rescue the trapped Gilbert Scott from his upended car. And while the rescue goes on, perhaps it's time to give a vote of thanks to Mr Hausman for his Formula 3 antics over the years. Rescued and Rescuer. Clipped by Hausman's car, Gilbert Scott had no chance to avoid his aerobatic display as we see it again in slow motion. But a close inspection of the damaged cars pays full testimony to their safety design and construction. Kathy Muller seems to have a thing about grass track racing. She's at it again at Donington Park. But what seems a harmless off-track excursion ends in quite a shunt as the unfortunate Mark Galvin ploughs into her car. This Irishman's no fool. He drives away from danger. The moment of impact in slow motion. Galvin turns pilot as the pack scatters. The talented and plucky Cathy Muller is close to collapse as the first aid men take her to safety. Still at Donington, and a little further up the track, Brazilian Maurizio Sandro Sala tests the stopping power of the gravel patch. Monaco, 1984, and John Nielsen, the Great Dane, makes a determined effort to go swimming in the harbour by trying to remove the armco. Too fast at the chicane, Nielsen flies through the air to slam into the barrier. 
but again, the Ralt stands up to the treatment. Formula 3 is at Thruxton in 85 and Canadian Alan Berg is back in action. He tries to go round Johnny Dumfries and fails. Others have their own method of dealing with the opposition and sometimes it's really effective. Giving the sponsors value for money is important. If you're not up with the leaders then do something to grab the attention of the cameraman is the philosophy of Bertrand Gachet at Spa. We promised you Russell Spence, and here he is persuading Formula 3 champion Johnny Dumfries to be a spectator for the remainder of the race. Gary Evans tests the catch fencing at Silverstone, and the Northamptonshire circuit provides more Formula 3 action. A spot of bother at the chicane. And the catch fencing's again put to the test. This character prefers to use the pit wall. The Formula 3 mating season at Donington Park. While at Zolder, Kathy Muller is flirting with Gary Evans. Ross Cheever doesn't want to play anymore and takes somebody with him for company. Bertrand Gachet showing that catch fencing can stop a car, but it can also give you a king size headache. No wonder more tracks than ever are using sand and gravel pits. Tim Davis and David Scott dispute the racing line at Brands Hatch. And others are quick to copy. No one can accuse Formula 3 racing of being boring. More fun and games at Silverstone. Russell Spence makes a mess of another overtaking manoeuvre with very expensive consequences. These Formula 3 men will race anywhere. Who needs tarmac? Sometimes even teammates get carried away as Mike Thackwell and Roberto Marino demonstrate at Woodcut. Now it's the Philip Strife show. First, his Thruxton performances. And now in the rain at Vallelunga, Italy, as he recovers from a grassy excursion in the blue AGS Formula 2 car. Alessandro Nanini with the Minardi has a spot of bother and is almost hit by the race traffic. Nanini continues to thrill the fans with a spin on the road circuit at Po. But this minor driving error did more damage. Roberto Marino in the Ralt was hard to beat on his day, except when there's only three wheels on the car. This Hockenheim crash was caused by the wheel studs breaking, letting the left-hand rear wheel escape. Christian Danner loses it at Enna in Italy, but recovers beautifully. Accidents can be driver error, but not always. Oil can be a major hazard, as the Formula 2 men discovered at Craner Curves Donington. First to spin out's Mike Thackwell, followed swiftly by the Minardi. Next is Alan Ferte, and the top four cars all go off the track. The Hondas were very reliable, well, most of the time. Alessandro Nanini's not always as fortunate in the Minardi. rain at Brands Hatch. An overseas visitor, Guido Daco, tries a shortcut to the M25 and Dover. Philip Strife had the honour of winning the final Formula 2 race of 1984. Saloon car racing has a place near and dear to every race fan's heart. The tin tops produce superb racing and lots of excitement. The tourist trophy at Silverstone in 85. Andy Rouse loses a wheel off the Ford and heads straight for the banking.
Tom Wonkinshaw in the Austin Rover is given no respect by one of the slower drivers, but escapes relatively scot-free. Barry Sheen, twice a motorcycle world champion, took up car racing in 85 and had lots of fun in the Toyota. But he wasn't always so fortunate. Thruxton, 85, and Sheen is right in the middle of one of the most spectacular saloon car pilots seen in this country in the past 10 years. One very modified Toyota. Just amazing. But how was the driver? How are the injuries, if any? Well, it's only that six months in a rehabilitation centre won't cure. <laughs> a cloudburst at Silverstone in 1984 during the Tourist Trophy race had some spectacular repercussions. The leader, Jeff Allen, hits trouble at Woodcut, and he's quickly joined by Frank Sittner in the BMW, who scrambles for safety as the fuel tank goes up. Another car into the catch fencing as the rain lashes down. And here comes the Jaguar of Jean-Louis Schleffer. Frank Sittner jumps off the banking to rescue the Jaguar driver, but the frantic shouts of the less foolhardy officials warn him of the arrival of another car. The skid pan claims more victims. Rain may be good for the garden, but it caused this little £100,000 scrapyard. The storm moves away. The Renaults enjoying themselves. And what's yours called? The Renault 5 turbos were even quicker and full of excitement too. Oscar Larari spins off at Brands Hatch. And teammate Conchon craves attention from our cameraman at the same circuit. Oh, much more impressive, mon ami. Couchon is the French word for pig, obviously a French road hog. And here's it all again at actual speed. One mate championships have been tremendous successes, with some memorable moments. And we now proudly present the Dutch formation crashing team as they perform before a live audience at Zandvoort. Missed it? Well, let's see this talented troop in slow motion action. The World Sports Car Championship Series produced some marvellous racing, but also some cruel tragedies. Le Mans in 1984 and the Mulsanne Strait. The Aston Martin, driven by John Sheldon, crashed at over 200 miles an hour and a marshal was killed. Oscar Larari makes a determined effort to flatten the Armco at Monza in 1985, doing his quarter of a million pound Porsche no good at all. Peter Brock gets all crossed up. And talking of fireworks, the Lancia Martini's on fire. Back in the pits, the fire extinguishers do their job. Hold on to your seats, animal lovers. This hare's living dangerously. Will he cross the track safely or not? Yes, he does. You can open your eyes now. The Peugeot leading Le Mans. 
a French-built car leading a French classic. It was all too much for Roger Douche. Quel disgrace. The debris of the Aston Martin crash. It spelt the end of racing for this famous mark. Rupert Keegan with the Skull Bandit car and our old friend Oscar Larari making a mess of the half million pound Porsche this time. Manfred Winkelhock spins gracefully at the new style Nürburgring in the wet. But one of the most feared dangers is fire. Drama in the pits as 1984 world champion Stefan Beloff is about to leave in the Rothmans Porsche, unaware that fuel has spilt over the car, igniting on a red-hot turbocharger. Viewed from another camera, a mechanic sees the fire and shouts a warning to stop Beloff leaving. in the Rothmans Porsche, carrying our now famous in-car camera, does it all wrong at the hairpin at Spa, but rejoins the fray. Jerry Bootson taking a shortcut at the Spa chicane in the Skull Bandit Porsche. Time for a pit stop. Fuji, Japan in 1984 and 1985 as the World Sports Car Series moved into the Far East. Action on and off the track. Spare a thought for poor old Fabio Villavio, a rather second-hand motor car. The series went down under to Sandown in 1984. The Australian track was breaking up and it gave a whole new meaning to the expression waltzing Matilda. Another three-wheeled Porsche, almost a familiar sight. A smoking Porsche, but what do you expect from one sponsored by a Spanish cigarette company? Monza in 1985. It was blowing a gale and had the dubious distinction of being the only race ever to have been stopped by a fallen tree. Spectators too share the danger from the elements. Well, I suppose that's one way to collect your firewood. Here's the wheel, where's the Porsche? Here it is, Thierry Bootson limping back to the pits at Silverstone in 1985. Manuel Lopez, a Peruvian, managed to spin coming out of the pit lane. Does he need a quick snort of something, or has he merely worked out the cost of repairs to his very expensive and much modified car? And the wheels keep falling off those Porsches. Le Mans, 1985, and another high-speed crash, almost identical to the Aston Martin incident a year earlier. This time, fortunately, no one was killed in Dudley Wood's 200 mile an hour shot. The car vaulted straight over the barrier, and this is the mangled wreckage. The impact was so hard, it even cracked the engine. Hockenheim in 1985. Derek Bell's Rothmans Porsche carries the camera this time as fire breaks out in the pits. The overcrowded pits were a serious safety hazard and only prompt action and brave men prevented this from turning into a major disaster. 
A thousand litres of fuel in the Rothmans pit alone, and within seconds it's a raging inferno. The bravest man of all, though, was this hero who stood his ground to turn off the air bottles. If they'd have exploded, the whole pit lane would have gone up. Derek Bell, still in his car, remained cool, calm and collected, before going on to win the race and clinch the title. But while refuelling continued, Bell's partner, Hans Stuck, looked overcome by smoke and flames. Camera still running as Bell rejoins the race and heads out to victory. Worst injured of all was the Rothmans Porsche team director Norbert Singer. His burns put him in hospital for weeks. An hour later, another fire. A blowback and the flames leap high. Just watch the reactions of a pit crew and officials to man's oldest enemy. The fire extinguisher puts out the blaze and almost extinguishes the mechanics. Again fire breaks out and again the extinguishers go into action. Five minutes later comes the Keystone Fire Brigade, but they seem to be a little rusty on the fire drill. Water, water everywhere, but none on the fire. The injured are taken for treatment. Out on the track, more sports car fun and frolics. The in-car cameras brought a new dimension to race car coverage and what better view of Manfred Winkelhock's misfortune could one have? The problems of backmarkers at Spa. At Brands Hatch in 1985, Hans Stuck and Bob Volek crashed on the racetrack and Stuck spins off. Feelings ran high and the incident was discussed back in the pits without a lot of apparent agreement. Ironically, the pair were teammates in the Rothmans Porsche squad for 1986. Fuji Japan in 1985. The race was run in a typhoon with conditions simply atrocious but that didn't stop a Nissan scoring the company's first world championship success. Formula Ford has almost cornered the market in motorsports thrills and spills. Let's start with just part of Bertrand Gachet's racing exploits at Paddock Ben Brands Hatch. We'll see the rest at the end of this section. Zan 
Zandvoort, Holland, and another major Formula Ford crash. And still at the Dutch circuit, the drivers have started throwing things at our cameraman. It's hard to keep your temper if you blame the other man for a crash, and our friend here is in no doubt of where the blame lies. Take a bet, you swine! But if you're awarding marks out of 10, this crash by a novice driver at Silverstone must rate an 11. And he walks away. Perry McCarthy managed an even better demolition job on his car at Alton Park in 1984. Everywhere you go, those Formula Fords are performing. Even racing on their own, little cars can be dangerous. This Cooper driver at a British hill climb thrills us all. In fact, hill climbs generally seem to be fraught with dangers for the unwary. Definitely one way to get your name in the paper. The producer's favourite kind of racing is Formula 4, and his favourite event, Festival Day at Brands Hatch. Now, Sonny, that's not the safest place in the world to pong on. And is that what he meant when he said he could win this race standing on his head? Another one falls by the wayside. This is organised mayhem. Spins to the left of us. Spins to the right of us. Why don't they stay on the track? Two American visitors inspect the safety facilities at Paddock from close quarters. Look, Ma, no wheels. Bertrand Gachet in the thick of the fighting again. And Gachet in the Marlborough car in trouble once more. Dodgems at Druids. And Damon Hill, son of the late Graham Hill, makes a mess of it. Not quite as bad as some, though. All this action and over just one weekend. But we'll end Formula Ford as we began, with Bertrand Gachet at his finest. Remember his crash at the start of the feature? Watch it now in its entirety. Look for Gachet in the middle of the front row. Thank you and goodbye, Bertrand. Square left mud and square left mud 80. Mid left mud 400. Sharp right. Okay.
OK, start it again. Sometimes even the best rally drivers have trouble keeping it between the hedges. The European Rally Championship continues to draw huge crowds and our in-car cameras and sound have added another dimension to the sport. Rallying is booming, spectator interest is growing and several events regularly attract estimated crowds of a million or more lining the route. The Monte Carlo Rally in 1985. Kenneth Erickson with the Golf GTI runs out of road. But it's the spectator who steals the show. His roadside vantage point seemed safe enough at the time, but that was before Kenneth started knocking down the telegraph poles. Bravely, our French enthusiast holds his ground until the very last moment. Never move till you see the underside of the car is his motto. There was nearly an accident in the 1986 Galway Rally in Ireland when the brakes failed on Bertie Fisher's Opal Manton. The in-car camera shows how he came within inches of running down two spectators who were standing in a dangerous position. Well done. Please. Lack of brakes seems a common complaint in rally cars. Rothman's Porsche driver, Syed Al Hajri, had a camera on the front of his car in the Circuit of Ireland in 1986. What better way to spectate a spin? Ah, it was never like this in the desert, Effendi. cameras work at night too, but Syed Al Hajari seems to have persistent navigational problems. The only crossroads in a thousand miles and neither of them saw the stop sign. The ever-growing sport of desert rabbits. In a world full of technology and science, these events pit man against nature, and often it's nature that comes out on top. The helicopter crash-landed in 86 in the Paris-Dakar rally and Jan de Roy, the Dutch lorry driver, in 84 showing scant regard for the stone walls. It's easy to make a mistake. The hazards can be well hidden as Hubert Oriol found out to his painful cost. Now that's what I call biting the dust. And he thinks it's all our cameraman's fault. Well, he didn't build the dunes. Even a cautious approach doesn't work. Just to the sheer scale of the drop is enough to unseat even the best rider, but he managed to steer clear of the other man. And burying your head in the sand won't make the terror of the rally go away, my friend. Having four wheels doesn't help a lot. The bigger they are, the harder they land. And sometimes you simply don't get away with it. The desert takes its toll, both physical and mechanical. Park the trailer, fasten your safety harness and we're off truck racing. A new sport has taken off in Europe in a big way, with private rigs battling wheel to wheel to wheel to wheel with factory-backed juggernauts. The action is fast, furious and king-size. But it does help if you can see where you're going. Uh, keep off the grass if you don't mind. Thank you. Uh, attention please, we need a breakdown truck for the broken down breakdown truck. 
And for my next trick, I will now jump 20 motorcycles with my truck. Talking of tricks, the World Trials Championship combines the skills of a gymnast, an acrobat and a tightrope walker, all on a motorbike. Competitors need skill rather than speed, as they tackle observed sections which are sometimes too difficult even to walk. on two wheels, but the Row Racing World Championships are all about speed and bravery. Dutchman Boot van Dolmen is narrowly missed by Britain's Rob McElnay as they crash at Paul Ricard. But Rob Suzuki just refuses to lie down. South African Brett Hudson wants to know who won, him or the bike. And Frenchman Jackie Under finds his perno machine has a mind of its own. Now that'll teach you to go off by yourself. The rain in Spain makes life impossible for former world champion Franco Uncini. And Neil Robinson has a sudden urge to lie down in the straw bales. Rob McElnay's at it again. But Stefan Mertens has found an even quicker way to dismount. 
Oh, sorry, Stefan, you've missed the knobbly knees contest. Even in slow motion, Merton's crash happens all too fast for the unlucky and talented Belgian. Rain at Hockenheim now. And South African Dave Peterson loses traction in a big way. And what happened in the accident, Raymond? <laughs> I see the accident because I crash in front. I say, shit, one more time. He say, oh, it's okay. And I, it's, it's uh, difficult because I see the, I don't know the name, steel. The, the Armco barrier, the barrier. Yeah. I see, shit, possible to go in a barrier. And I, I say, yeah. no. I work because I think Eddie is just behind. <laughs> and after it's okay because it's very it's pin I have pin and it's, it's very fast and quickly to you don't uh, you you wash because if for a rider crash you wash uh, slow 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 but it's fast but you think slow 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 but after my rem don't remember uh, and what have you done to, to your foot what injuries do you have the finger foot uh, uh, no toe toe hey. Two, <laughs> if you want. <laughs> yeah, if two is, um, I don't know, broken or the, the name. Britain's Steve Mason forced wide at Magello when a rival unloads in front of him. And Austrian August Auinger steps off at the same circuit. Italian Luca Caldalora snatches the lead, but not for long. When the rear tyre breaks away, the only thing a rider can do is pray. The luck of the Irish strikes again. Neil Robinson gets carved up and down he goes. And with that fuel tank burning merrily, it's no good getting hot under the collar, Neil. But Spaniard Carlos Carlos almost has a monopoly on the Grand Prix crashing stakes. Here he is falling off at Magella. And again in the Yugoslavian Grand Prix at Rijeka. Take three, the Dutch TT at Assen. Assen was the downfall of many in 85. Here's Italian hero Fausto Ricci stepping off the Rotman's Honda. Spaniard Tony Garcia at Assen. It seems as if everyone's going to the dogs. Two's company and Steve Webster and Tony Hewitt share an early bath at the Dutch TT. Where's my passenger? The British pair were leading the race till they took to the grass. But they soon found that the sidecar was no submarine. Carnage continues at Assen. Frenchman Christian Saron slides off, collecting Freddie Spencer on the way. The 
the unlucky American has no chance as Saron's Yamaha knocks away the front wheel on the Rothmans Honda. But Belgian Didier de Radigues performs miracles to avoid the debris and stay upright. Cabaret time as Austrian Karl Truches entertains the vast crowd with his popular song and dance routine. Eddie Lawson tries just a little too hard as he battles with Ron Haslam. But grass track racing at 100 miles an hour or more is just not on. Terrier Espagne stands his 500 on its head at Le Mans. But it takes two to tango as Boot van Dolmen and Hiro Hyverinen pirouette out of the race at the French track. Christian Saron decides to take a closer look at our intrepid cameraman at the French Grand Prix. Seen again in slow motion, we see just how close Saron on the bike came to our cameraman. Only an Irishman like Dermot O'Boyle would stand his ground. Loris Reggiani makes a real mess of the chicane at Spa. And things can get pretty hectic on the opening laps. Reinhold Roth and Hans Becker collide at the top of the hill. Luckiest man of all though in this horrific high-speed pileup is Lewis Race on bike 34, a whisker away from disaster. Scotsman Donnie McLeod, glad he's not wearing the kilt today. Wayne Gardner with a spot of handling problems. The on-bike camera has given fireside race fans a rider's eye view of the action. And this was no better illustrated than when Randy Mamola clipped the rear of Raymond Roche's Yamaha. In slow motion, the crash is even more impressive. As Mamola's world turns upside down, the camera emerges unscathed and in much better shape than rider or machine. moment of impact from yet another angle. Two more close encounters of the straw bale kind, Scandinavian style, at Anderstorp. And anything the two wheel men can do, the three wheelers can do even better, as this Swiss crew proves.
Now that's what I call flipping your lid. But wait, it's Derek Jones to the rescue. With one bound, he picked up the outfit and released the tap driver. Who is that masked man? Silverstone in the wet, as we know, can be treacherous. Here's confirmation. And again, the 250 racers leader Alan Carter slides gracefully out of the running. A whole new meaning for a roll in the hay. Sometimes not falling off can be just as spectacular as Paul Lewis demonstrates. On the other hand, you can't always avoid it. No matter how hard you try. First you see him, then you don't. Peter Radford simply forgets to stop leaning over once he's gone round the corner at Surface Paradise. Now Wayne Gardner gives us a rider's eye view of a crash. But for sheer spectacle and star quality, our two-wheel Crash of the Year award goes to Californian Randy Mamola at Misano. The crowd appeal for an encore. Zandvoort, Holland, World Records Day 1985. 21-year-old Frenchman Pierre Gouton steps off the rear bumper of a car and will attempt to slide on his back at over 100 miles an hour. Will he live to be 22, we ask ourselves. Some people are always hanging around. Nick Holliday is obviously about to be dropped by his sponsors from a great height. Don't worry, he won't get hurt. He's got half a dozen cars to break his fall. Here's a novel way to catch a bus. Yves Vianne is the first man to do this stunt. But don't worry, there'll be another one along in a minute. Here's the Flying Dutch Woman. A successful jump, and then a crash. Well, what can you expect from a woman driver? A game of Skittles, Zandvoort style. Five scored. Uh, next player, please. waiting in traffic jams while well, Alan Beck has a novel way of jumping the bus queue. Now that's what I call going out in a blaze of glory. 